What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. It is just about the middle of summer here in July and that means it's time for another everyday carry update. Now as promised, I will be bringing these out every single season, so I'll do one in summer, spring, winter, and fall. And the more that I do these, the more that I realize that everyday carry to me may be different from everyday carry to some other people out there. Ideally, would I like to carry the exact same things with me all the time? Yeah, of course. But at the same time, a lot of what I do here on the channel is all about testing out gear and seeing what works and what doesn't really work. I'm constantly trying out all of these new products because I want to put out information on them. Some things good, some things bad. And because of that, technically my everyday carry is constantly evolving and changing and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this as well. The one thing in my everyday carry loadout, something that never changes are the actual items that I have with me. So I always have my cell phone, wallet, keys, and then for the most part, I always have a flashlight, a knife, and a firearm. So in that aspect, my EDC never really changes. I know what I want to have on me and some of the things that I'm going to be using pretty frequently. But then at the same time, those items are going to be constantly evolving as I'm testing out new products that come out and just kind of living with these items to give you guys some information on them. So with that being said, I'm going to be dumping out everything that I have in my pockets today in the middle of summer. Some of these things have been around for a long time. Some of these things are relatively new, like in the past couple of weeks. Now we're gonna kick things off with one thing Thing that a lot of people ask me about but I've never actually covered in an EDC update and that particular item are these glasses that you guys see me wearing all the time. These are the Spy Discords. I have about five pair of these glasses. They're really big and this is really all that I actually wear. These are matte black with polarized lenses and they also have that Spy Happy Lens technology if you're familiar with their sunglasses. Right there you can see the make and model Spy Discords. I get a ton of questions about these and if you want to pick a pair of these up, I will leave a link for them in the description down below as well as pretty much everything else that I'm gonna show you guys today. So these are ones that I've never covered. I don't really know why. I do actually have them with me all the time. I have them in all my different vehicles and they're always on my face. Now moving on to some of the boring stays like my cell phone, nothing here has changed. This is the Google Pixel 2 XL. I've got the same case, the same pop socket, the same matte screen protector, and so far this phone has been great. I really don't see the need to upgrade right now. However, I would actually like to have two phones because of how much I'm actually working on this thing. I'm doing emails and all my social media stuff. I'm like managing my YouTube account through my phone a lot of the time. I don't plan on upgrading this anytime in the future, however, I would like to have a second phone that way I could have an iPhone something that runs iOS the reason for that being is because I edit all of my videos on a MacBook I do a lot of my thumbnails and photo stuff on an iPad and one of the main features that I really like about the whole iOS system is airdrop since this is an Android device, it is running stock Android, which I love. I don't think I will ever stray away from this. I will always have a device that runs completely stock Android. Now, while I really do enjoy this experience, I would like to have a second phone as an iPhone, any of them for that matter. That way I can drop large files through AirDrop, through all of my different devices and it'll kind of speed up my workflow. Right now I'm using things like Google Drive and Dropbox and things of that nature and it works, but it can be a little bit clunky at times, especially from an outsider's perspective. I could talk about that stuff for another five minutes and that will bore you to death, so let's move on to the next item. Front left pocket, I have another mainstay, my Trayvax Contour. I test out a lot of different wallets coming from Trayvax and hands down they're my favorite brand. A lot of their products are ones that I carry with me all the time and you guys know all about them already. So this is still the same TS branded black obsidian contour here. It has my logo on the back. In the front, I am carrying their shift comb, beard comb, hair comb, whatever you want to do with it. Holds cash in the back, a bunch of cards. You guys have seen this a million times. Now moving on to my keys. I actually have them hanging up here in the van. Of course, we still have the Trayvax link. At the time of me filming my last EDC update, these were not available. However, if you've been following along on the channel or over on Instagram, you will know that we finally brought these back. These are now available in a bunch of different variances. They're making them in leather now. I still have my original nylon one from years and years ago. It's just a quick detach lanyard and everyone who has received one thus far seems to love it. If you ordered one and you were a little bit late on that jump, then yours probably will be shipping soon. And a lot of people ask me about all the shipping logistics and things like that over at Trayvax. I don't know anything, so if you're emailing me asking where your order is, 
That just doesn't really make any sense. So for the most part, if you did pre-order one of these already, they should be shipping pretty soon. I'm sure a lot of you have them by the time you're watching this video. And if you have watched some of Trayvac's update videos, they say that these are going to be here to stay. That means that they should be available on their website here in the future. Now also on these keys, I have another mainstay, the Gerber Shard. This is such a sweet little multi-tool. I recommend it all the time and I have one on every set of keys for every vehicle that I have. It's got the pry bar, the two flatheads, the Phillips head, a bottle opener. You can open packages with it. It's just the ultimate tiny little multi-tool and it's TSA approved. You can bring it with you everywhere. This is one of those products that I recommend to everyone. They are very inexpensive. You can pick them up for a few bucks on Amazon. And I was actually thinking what I could do to improve the Gerber Shard and I did come up with a few little ideas that as long as it stays in the same form factor that I could make one of these of my own. So that's sort of an idea that I had in the back of my head. I'm not sure if I will follow through with that soon, but in the future, I think I might take a stab at developing one of these on my own because I just use it so much. That's a little bit of behind the scenes type of stuff, so I will fill you guys in on that more in the future. Now also on my keys, I still have the same Olight. This is the i1R EOS. It's a tiny little keychain light. It is rechargeable five lumens and then 120 lumens or 130 lumens, something like that. This is another one of those tools just like the Gerber Shard where I have a ton of them and they are on all of the keys that I own. Now when it comes to pocket lights, I actually don't have one in my pocket right now. I kind of bounced around in the past. I was carrying a larger Olight, one of the ones that ran on a AAA battery. I was also carrying a bunch of different batons, the S1R baton, the S2R baton 2 was one that was in my pocket for a while. I actually have that one here in the van. But if I'm being honest with you guys, I really don't carry a pocket light all that much, even in the summer now. Maybe in the winter time, I'll get back into it a little bit more because you don't have have as much daylight as you do in summer but for the most part this has been tackling all of my needs it's super tiny it's on your keys all the time so for the most part you will always have it with you it's not taking up any room in your pocket and these also are very inexpensive they're about like 20 bucks i think so right now for summer this is my main flashlight here and it gets the job done it does everything that i need it to do now we're going to move into the last couple of items which almost all of these are new my knife my firearm and my belt i've actually changed my belt i guess we can cover that first since we're already talking about it this is where it gets a little awkward as you guys kind of stare at my crotch so here I have a new belt coming from Core Essentials. You guys may remember in the past, about two years ago, I covered one of these belts. It is their Trackline technology, sort of like a giant zip tie. They do have a new belt buckle. As you can see, it's sort of a nylon material. There is still some leather on the inside here. And previously, I did like those belts because of this simply slip it through there and it ratchets together super quick micro adjustments and this thing is relatively sturdy as well now one thing that i did not like about the original belts that i reviewed is that they were a little bit too fancy they had some kind of like bling buckle on here and they were leather pretty much all the way around and this belt in my opinion is much more suited to be an everyday carry type of belt i'm no longer working in a professional environment so i would much prefer something that is a little bit more sleek like this it's not screaming it's got that matte black belt buckle and overall I kind of like it previously you guys know that I was rocking my Trayvac cinch and I have been rocking this one now for about two weeks or so I'm really just testing this out for a review video which I should be bringing you guys sometime next week so far I'm digging it and I will give more of my thoughts and opinions on that once I get around to filming a video on this belt now that's one thing that's probably pretty surprising to you guys because you know how much I love and recommend the Trayvac cinch but like I said I am just testing this out maybe I will go back to my Trayvac cinch but maybe I will end up rocking this for a little bit longer while I'm down here I might as well mention these shorts you guys see me wearing these a lot in the summer and I've covered them in the past these are coming from vertex I believe these are known as the hide LTs they have some magazine pockets over here reinforced lips all the way around they're really comfortable really durable they breathe a little bit in the summertime because of the mesh pockets and things like that so for the most part in the summer I have about three pair of these and I'm kind of rotating them out I do have a discount code for all of the vertex backpacks like my EDC pack that I carry with me all the time and anything else that they make so if you guys are interested in checking those out 
can check out the link in the description down below. Now we're moving on to the item that changes the most out of everything that I carry in my EDC updates. That is of course the pocket knife and right now I'm actually carrying a knife that has not released if you're watching this video right when it goes live. This right here is the Blade HQ exclusive Benchmade bug out and of course it is all black. I was kind of holding out on getting this knife and testing it out because the colors that they had before were like blue and green with a gold thumb stud and things like that. Now that Blade HQ stepped up to the plate and made an all black everything bug out, this thing has been in my pocket for the past two weeks or so. I do plan on making a video on this knife sometime in the future, so I'll just give a couple first impressions. One, it is so light and it is so thin, it basically gets lost in your pocket. It has a tiny little deep carry pocket clip on here, which is also black, so it is really inconspicuous. It's got the axis lock, this thing flicks open. It doesn't close quite as nicely as the heavier knives like a Gratillion, but this thing is still fairly new. It's kind of hard to tell just how thin and light this thing is until you get it in your hand. It does have the grievery handles, which I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not a big fan of that like plasticky feel. However, with that material, you are getting a knife that is super lightweight. There's some jimping on the back. The blade is S30V steel. I have actually been getting into sharpening knives a lot more, so once I put some more use on this edge, I will be able to tell if I actually like this steel a lot or not. In the past, I was not a huge blade steel snob. However, now that I'm getting more into detailed sharpening of these knives, I think my tastes and preferences are going to be changing a little bit as we go forward. This does take a little bit to get used to because it is so thin, but it's just one of those knives that does exactly what you need it to do and it doesn't really do anything more than that. Here you can see it in my pocket with those little reinforced lips on there coming from Vertex. And as you can see, basically gets lost in there. You can't really tell. Just in the past two weeks or so since I've had this thing in my pocket, I have actually taken off shorts and pants when this thing was in my pocket and I completely forgot it was there because it's so light. Now luckily I have not sent this thing through the washer, but overall first impression, I think I really like this knife. But again, a pocket knife is one thing that is constantly changing. There are so many good choices out there and a couple that I actually have to make videos on. Before I got this thing from Blade HQ, I actually got a Benchmade bailout because I wanted something that was sort of this size and weight, but I didn't want to have those other colors that were not black on the original bug outs. So this thing is pretty rad. If you're watching this video right when it goes live, I believe these are available for pre-order on Blade HQ and they should start shipping tomorrow. If you think you would be interested in an all black bug out, I would recommend getting on that sooner than later because chances are they are going to go fast. All right guys, now we're moving on to my final piece of this equation for my summer EDC setup. If you did catch last week's Sunday Gun Day, you will see me putting together this entire pistol and I've been carrying it since I put it together. And that is of course my newest edition of the Glock 19 MOS. I'm running this thing with the same Ameriglo sights and the RMR RM09. This is a one MOA dot. Same setup as my Glock 17, which I've been taking to training events and things like that. Instead of a Surefire X300, like on my 17, I'm running an Inforce APLC on here. If you want all of my thoughts and opinions on this gun, you can go and check out that video. But for the most part, I'm digging it a lot. In that video, it goes from everything right out of the box, me putting everything together and then coming out here and shooting it. And just like my 17, I picked this thing up and I shot it very well right from the start. Now after shooting that magazine, I have 215 rounds through this gun so far. I like to keep a detailed round count of the guns that I actually carry. Typically when I come up and I'm filming Sunday Gun Day videos, I'm shooting a lot of different handguns. I try to stay in the practice of starting all of my filming sessions by shooting my carry gun and then ending it as well. So I'll come up, load up a fresh mag. I'll shoot one full mag before I start filming and then before I leave, I will also run one more through. That way I can just kind of keep that ingrained in my brain. Let's run this thing a little bit more just for the hell of it.
Yeah, so I'm definitely loving this gun so far. If you guys want to see all of my detailed thoughts and the actual build of this gun, you can check out that recent video. And then of course, I'm running this thing up front in a QVO more discreet holster. Just simple black, high sweat guard. It's got the wing on here to keep the pressure in against my belt. I'm really liking this gun and you guys will see it here on the channel some more in the future as I go to different training events and just end up shooting all over the place. So that about wraps up my EDC update. If you guys have any questions on anything that you saw here, please let me know in the comments down below. Like I mentioned, a lot of these products are new and I'm testing them out. Some of them may stay, some of them might not. Ideally, I would like to have one end all be all everyday carry setup where I'm carrying the same gun, the same knife, the same everything. However, that would kind of make for boring content. And there's a lot of cool stuff out there that I want to test out and let you guys know what I think about it. So that's why I'm doing things like testing out this new belt and this new knife. I think this one might actually stick around for a little while, but I say that all the time, so who knows. So that's it for this summer update. Next time I see you guys for an EDC video, we'll be in the middle of October for a fall update. So if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week and there's a lot more stuff coming down the pipe. That's all that I got. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.